welcome to GemTrue. Today we're just going to go over how to use the Multi Xperia, which is GemTrue's diamond and moissanite tester. The Multi Xperia is developed by GemTrue's partner company, Dikai Tools in Shenzhen, China. Um, it's been on the market now for a couple of years. Uh, it's the final tester of a range of testers that um, have been produced by Dikai Tools. And it's a very good tester. It, without blowing our own trumpet, we feel that it's a very good tester. Why is it a very good tester? Uh, it's pretty indestructible. Uh, it has a tip on there and a mechanism in, inside that makes it very hard to damage the tip and break the tip. And you can you can knock it on the table like that and um, it's not going to damage. So it's a good tester for letting your staff use and not having to worry that they're going to bend the tip or the tip gets stuck up inside. Um, that kind of thing. So it's, it's very durable, the tip is very good, it comes with a 9 volt battery as we explained before, um, so it's a good battery. Um, when buying a battery as I've, as I've explained before, make sure you buy a good quality alkaline battery. Don't buy a piece of rubbish, uh, a fake one or a cheap one, buy a branded name alkaline battery 9 volt. Um, so this tester is for main purpose is for testing diamond and moissanite. Um, it does have an added function to pick out sapphire and ruby, just to alert you that you know it's not a diamond. You've got a sapphire in there or a ruby in there, and it also has the test for metal alert if you're touching any of your metal area on jewellery. So if you're testing mounted stones, you can pick that up. I'll explain that more in a moment. Okay, so this tester has a UV function. It has a UV light built in the front for um, fluorescence of UV. And that's an added extra. To turn that on, you've got three positions. You've got on, uh, center off, and over the rear here, UV. So to use the UV function just as a UV torch, it's the correct wavelength for fluorescence of diamonds. Uh, I will do another video on just to give a quick example of what to look for in fluorescence of diamonds. Um, it's quite straightforward, quite simple. It's just a useful extra tool in the front there. Um, to turn it off, you switch it back to the center position. Now, when it's in the UV position, you can't use it as a tester. It's not combined. Um, switch it over to the on position, and it comes on, and you get a red flashing light. Now, when you get this red flashing light, if it's flashing at a slow speed like this, it's just testing the room temperature and the environment. It's um, setting up the tester ready for testing. It takes about 15 to 80 seconds, 18 seconds, sorry, which is the right time. Um, any shorter, you don't get a stable setup. So when it's green, it's ready to go. If it flashes red very, very fast, then you need to change the battery. And that's explained in the instructions. So I'm just going to switch it back off before we do any testing and explain something really important with any tester um, is the tips are made from copper and the copper tarnishes. So if you haven't been using this for a while, then you do need to clean the tip. And the way to do that is to use normal plain paper. And we supply a cleaning pad in the set. And basically you take off the cap, um, holding the test as, as so, and you just for 10 seconds shine up the end of a tip. Using plain paper, smooth plain paper, like the cleaning pad we give you. This cleans off any muck, tarnishing, grease, dirt or anything. You shouldn't use a cloth, you shouldn't blow on it, you shouldn't get it moist or anything like that. Um, just clean it up like that on a piece of plain paper, that's all you need. Okay, the next step before you do any testing is to clean your stones. This is really important and you should use a lint-free cloth. Um, stones get greasy, they get muck on them, flick on them, dust, heat from your fingers, all sorts of things. So when cleaning them, just clean them off. You can put the loose stones in the stone, loose stone plate here, loose stone tray that's, melt, that's supplied in the case. And um, your loose jewellery, just clean up the stone, make sure there's nothing on it, using a lint-free cloth or a tissue that doesn't have any flick or anything on it, it's okay. Try not to handle the stones too much with your fingers because of the grease and um, heat, heat transfer to the stones. You know, the stones are very good conductors of heat. We'll take in the heat and if the temperature of the heat is too hot, the temperature of a stone is too hot, then you'll get a false reading. 
Okay, so we'll turn the tester back on, and we've got to wait for this startup time. Uh, when testing with this tester, it's essential that you hold this silver area here. Um, this tester works on thermal and electrical conductivity. So it needs to measure a resistance on the item that you're um, testing between you and you also need to ground the item that you're testing. So if it's loose jewellery, you need to hold on to the jewellery as so. You should never hold on to the top of the jewellery like a ring up on the stone because you're just transferring the heat into the stone. And if, it, you know, if it's mounted stone, hold it back here. Don't hold it up here. If it's loose stones, use a loose stone plate or a loose stone tray um, and always put one finger on the stone like that, uh, on the plate like that to ground it when you're testing. Now, you don't have to do this. People say you don't have to do this and it does work if you don't do it, but it's good to do it because what happens is sometimes it needs that ground to get a good reading, especially on a moissanite sometimes. So always ground what you're testing with your other hand. Never hold the tester on the front with your fingers around the tip as well. One, you're not holding the grounding, the, you know, the testing area plate here at the front. And two, you're transferring heat into the tip. And inside here is a lot of um, technology, um, sensors, etc., uh, connected to this copper tip. So you're transferring heat through the plastic into there, which will cause you false readings. Okay, moving on. So we'll start with uh, a mounted stone. Before we do, I'll just explain the colours. So you've got diamond is blue, moissanite is green. It will light up, this whole area will light up green, not just the starting colour green. Diamond is blue, this whole area will light up blue. Uh, red is if you get a uh, sapphire, you know, it's a warning light. If you get a sapphire and a ruby in there, um, you can put them aside, you know. And then you've got this metal alert. Now, most people know what this is, but for those who don't, if you're testing a stone and you accidentally touch the metal because you've got poor eyesight, then you can stop immediately because if you don't have this metal alert and you keep pressing on the metal, this will heat up the metal and therefore heat up the stone. And then when you do eventually get onto the stone, you'll get a false reading. And this is what confuses a lot of people with testing um, is you know, holding the tester on items too long, holding it with your fingers too much, not cleaning the stones ready, not cleaning the tip properly, so, and not holding the tester properly, all of these things will um, cause issues while testing. So if you can follow this guide and be patient and keep things clean and don't hold loose stones in your fingers, use good tweezers if you can't hold them in the stone plate. If you've got a piece of jewellery with lots of stones mounted, small stones mounted, and it's too small like an earring, use a pair of tweezers to hold it. Um, you take away the heat from the stone area. Um, so there we go. So let's do a quick test to show you how it works. Um, so I'm going to start with a diamond here, and there you go. So it will always flash red first while it's taking the reading. If the stone's heated, it will stay red for a lot longer before it goes blue, and that means the stone's too hot, so you need to let it cool. Uh, I'll give you an example of that in a moment, but let's just go back and do a quick... No, there you go. So I touched the metal. I touched the mounting of the ring there, so there you go, on the diamond. I could jump straight over here to a ruby. Sorry, that's a moissanite, not a ruby. The ruby's at the back here. So there's a ruby. Um, again, no sound, it's just a warning light. It doesn't matter how many lights you get. It's just to let you know, oh, that's a ruby, or here's a sapphire. Oh, that's a sapphire. Let's put that aside or check it. And then back over to the moissanite and then over to this other diamond. So there's no waiting time. You can jump from stone to stone, providing everything's clean and you're holding the tester and using it as instructed. Now let me give you an example of what happens when you heat a stone. So there are many ways to heat a stone. You can hold it with your finger. So here you go, look, the test is quick, okay? No, sorry, touch the metal. Okay, so the test is quick. But if I hold it here and I keep testing it, okay, which a lot of people do, you know, they're like, oh, look, it's a diamond, yeah, look, look, and they don't stop, and they just keep testing, and they keep testing, and they keep testing, and they say, you try, and, and you try, and someone else has a go, and then they get on it. And now you see that red, look, it can't read the stone, it's way too hot. So if it's a continuous red like that, it's not a ruby or a sapphire, if you're sure that this is a diamond and you want to check, now, that'll cool down if I put it on the metal. A good way to see if it's too hot is use the inside of your wrist. Using the inside of your wrist, this is really hot, this stone actually, I've really heated it up. So, this, 
put it down on the, the stone plate there, and that will draw the heat out of the stone. Um, if for the first time you touch a diamond and it goes red and doesn't test blue, it could well be a, a, a sapphire, you know. Uh, but if you think, well, that is a diamond, I know that's a diamond, clean the stone with a cloth, let it cool, make sure the tip is clean of the tester, and then test again. And you should get the blue light. Um, and as it starts to cool down, a little bit longer, it's too hot. Um, also, for CZ, everyone asks me, what does it do on CZ? Can it test CZ? No, it can't. CZ has no thermal or electrical conductivity. So when you put it on CZ, it's like putting it on a piece of glass. I don't have any here with me. I don't have any CZ or glass, but it'll do nothing. It'll just be like it is now, ready to start. Uh, it will be like touching it on this board. It won't do anything. So that's it really. Let's just see if we can test this hot stone again, just to give you an example. There you go. So the, the stone cooled down. I placed it on a metal plate, it, which draws the heat out. And there you go, it's fine again. So there it is, that's the Gemtru multi Xperia. Um, that's how to use it. And as I've explained before, um, you can purchase this on our website at gemtru.com. Also, this tester is the only one I know of that comes with a lifetime guarantee on the tip and a lifetime warranty on the actual tester. And on the bottom of each tester, is the warranty number. This is a unique warranty number. It's engraved into the tester. And when you purchase this number, it's recorded in our system. So if you do have a problem and you come back to us, or you come back to one of our suppliers, international suppliers, um, one of our recommended exchange stores or, or service dealers, they will um, be able to find it and where it was purchased from, whether it was from Gemtru or one of our other customers, one of our, one of our um, wholesalers or their retailers, they'll be able to trace it back to us and offer you a replacement and uh, of course we'll compensate them. So there you go, that's how it goes. Again, just a quick reminder, 295 US dollars from gemtrue.com, that includes free shipping internationally anywhere you are and that should come within four to five working days. Uh, you can go on the website, all our contact details are there, gemtrue.com, you can get hold of us on WhatsApp there, our email is on there, and also you can Skype us on there too. We accept all major credit cards and PayPal. So if you have any questions and need to know any more, you can find us at gemtrue.com or you can leave comments down, down below. Okay, well thank you very much for watching and there will be more to come.